Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and today's session is focusing around possession. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into the first part of this week's session, we're going to be focusing around the passing and moving sequence. But before we get into it, let's have a look at the equipment that we need for this week and how many players we're working with. So we have 14 players this week, okay? So for the first part of the session, they're gonna get split into two groups of seven, all right? So you'll have two different areas for the players to work in. In terms of the equipment for this week, we're gonna be using balls, bibs, cones, poles if you have them, and then again, small-sided goals if you have them. If not, you can use poles, and again, if you don't have the balls, you can just use cones. So for the first part, we're gonna be doing a passive moving sequence, okay? Which is gonna be focusing on retaining possession, okay? And focusing on movements in the middle of the pitch. So with our seven players, we're gonna have two players at the start point here. So we're gonna have from the first pole here, okay, it's gonna be 10 yards into this middle one. And we're gonna have five yards for the middle players, uh, the central players to work in. And then we're gonna have an extra 10 yards again. Okay, you can make it bigger if you want to with your passes, but we want it to be short and sweet. Okay, so the ball's moving quicker. So in, in total there, <clears throat> we've got 25 yards. And in terms of our width, we're gonna go um, from the end one here into the middle point here will be 10 yards, and then from the end one here to there will be 10 yards again. Okay, so this one's, these ones here will just be five yards in between. So with this here, obviously that's, we're saying about 10 yards, so that'll be about eight yards for that one, and eight yards in there again. Again, if you're working with different players, if you're working with older players, you might wanna make it um, a little bit bigger. Okay, if you're working with younger players, this is probably a perfect uh, size for it. Just adjust it, you might start the, the drill and you think it's a bit too big, so you can make it smaller, and vice versa, it might be too small, so you make it a bit bigger, okay? So we're focusing on the midfield movements, okay, to set the ball out so we can play out, okay? So how it's gonna start here, is with our player uh, on the outside. They're gonna take a touch, okay, which encourages the movement of this player here, who's gonna come out wide, and then they're gonna come across to receive, okay? When the ball gets played in here, they're gonna look to set back, okay, to our, as if it's our fullback or a wide midfielder, okay? And then we're gonna follow that movement around, okay, up to this pole here. When this player's made that movement, we're looking for this player then to come off their line, okay? So we're trying to use the poles to make it more realistic, okay? So then we're playing a first time pass okay, into here, okay, for another set, okay, to this player who's made their run around, and then we're looking for this player to do a double movement, okay, so when that, when, when that set's being made, okay, we're looking to them, for them to pull out here, so then when the ball gets played into them on the opposite side, they're moving onto the ball, okay, so then our movement so far will be the player who started the play will come into the wide area here, the player who was wide will come into the first um, central um, uh, role here, the player who was, who's played the two passes in the center will move out left, okay? And then the player who's set here from this side will then make their way up to the top here. Then what we're looking for is this player to take a touch to encourage movement from the wide player to come short, played in, okay? Played back, okay? But then we're looking for that movement around into space, okay? To play through, okay? For, for the player to meet it and then to play back to the start and then we go again, okay? So then this player will move up to there, and the players play the near will follow their pass. Okay, so we'll go again. So we're taking our touch out, encourage the movement. Okay, then burst in, looking to play, set, get out of there to encourage the movement for this midfielder. Play in, set again. Okay, once we do that set, we're looking for that movement to go wide. Play the ball in front to move on to. Okay, once we've took that touch, play in, play back, set out. Okay, touch in front and play through. Okay, so focusing on their movements to be quick, okay? At the start, you maybe want to walk through it more if you, with younger players or if the players aren't understanding it. And then we're trying to build that intensity up and make the tempo nice and quick. So all the areas in here, we're trying to focus on one touch, okay? Once it gets out wide, obviously we want the two touch to encourage the movement and then again, back to one touch to play through. Okay, so we're trying to retain possession in, in the central area, okay, to move the ball out, get it high into space, and then again, retain possession again. We will now move into our first animation, before moving on to part two of this week's session.
Now moving into part two of this week's session, we're now moving into a small side of game uh, based around possession, okay? So what we're gonna have our players split into now is two teams of six with two floaters, okay? And what we're looking for the team in possession to do is to make the pitch wide, okay? So we've got more chance of retaining the ball in the middle of the pitch and working it to another side and then playing forward, okay? In terms of the setup, okay, we're going 40 yards of depth and 40 yards of width. And then we've got four five yard boxes, okay, in the corners, okay? You can make them a little bit smaller if you want to. These areas are for the players in possession to try and get two players in them, okay? So that they're gonna be unopposed. So when they receive the ball in here, they can be closed down outside the box in terms of cutting passing lanes, but they can't go in and tackle them. Okay, so what we're looking for then is, it could be our two centre-backs go in there, okay, which means our defence midfielder can come in, all right, and then we can use our floaters to make it an 8v6, okay, and obviously with our two players out here, we've always got an out ball, okay, so what we're trying to look for is instead of cramping the midfield all in here, cramping central areas, okay, we're trying to make the pitch a bit bigger, okay, so when the ball, let's say the ball starts in here, Okay, we've got our six blues, okay, two of them in the boxes. So what we want to try and tell the players is when you're getting a good spell of possession, okay, so once you've transitioned, so once you move the ball from one area of the pitch to another, try and get two players moving in and out of any of the boxes, okay, to give them options to switch the play, okay, to play wide, okay, and then give players more chance of moving with our two floaters. So for the greens, it's, okay, they're trying to shut down passing lanes, okay, trying to press the ball to win it back. If the greens win it, then obviously the blues will come out of there, um, the yellows will then help the greens. So what we're looking for now is, can we get a bit of shape, okay? Can the yellows try and occupy the central areas, okay, so they can try and um, be, a bit, be a bit creative, okay, with the other players in the blues, so players in the wide areas might get played into the yellow, who gets closed down, which then leaves one of the blue players free. We play in, we get a run into one of the wide areas from a blue player, okay, we come out, Okay, and then we can eventually see somebody come up into the other um, into the other zone. Again, so the player control the ball in here. Okay, we get runners coming in, we play in. We might get the yellow player moving out, play into here. And what we might find is players interchanging. So this player might come out the box and then this player comes in. Again, taking one of the green players away to find movements. Again, we play in, we play out, and then we're looking to play in again and switch the play. Okay, so we're getting players moving in and out the boxes, okay? Lots of movements, so we're looking to get the ball in, okay, get that possession, get it out wide, and then again, retaining it by playing higher, okay? So we're using those extra, extra zones for the players to recognize, okay? Occupy wide areas, okay? Again, if we're going this way, I'm attacking forward, okay? We're trying to play through the lines. It can be, you know, a player comes short, we have our floaters, we get our width, okay? We have two players in here, Okay, we play into the blue. Okay, he gets closed down. We play in, we play out, and then we play forward. Okay, you've broke through that middle third or the defensive third, whatever you want it to be. Okay, and then we're looking. Obviously, we would go and score um, if we had a goal in it, but obviously, we're trying to retain that ball, so we're trying to play in, get into space. Okay, make it difficult for the greens by, you, by occupying them zones. Okay, so what we find usually is with players is when you give them a, a big space, even sometimes, especially a younger age group, okay, they tend to occupy the same area and it tends to be central areas. So by putting these zones in, okay, you give somewhere for the players to occupy, okay, to get into those wide areas, create more space in the middle for players to move, okay, and then again, they've got to be more aware of what's around them. So then if the ball transitions and the greens get it, the blues will come out, whatever we're in, whoever we're in the zones. Greens will try and get in there, okay, try and get uh, players in there to play in, okay, move the ball, get it out of there, okay, and you might get a player occupying in there, and use the floaters, you're looking for plenty of movement off, okay, get the ball and play now, so retain it as much as we can. You can bring in a point system, maybe every 10 passes can be a goal, after 10 passes you might go to two touch, or you might say every time you play into one of the zones, okay, and then you play to another zone, every time you play into two you might get a point as well, so try and bring a point system into it as well as you progress it. We will now move into our next animation, before moving on to this week's four corner model. Okay, so taking a look at this week's four corner model, starting off with technical and tactical. Okay, we're looking mainly around moving the ball quickly. 
Okay, so in the small side of the game, which we've just looked at, okay, the quicker we move the ball, the more chance we've got. Find those little gaps, okay, to play intricate passes, okay, be nice and quick and then move the ball to an opposite side. Again, in part one uh, of this week's session, when we were doing the passing sequence, it's important that we move that ball quickly, okay, but the execution of our passes, which we're looking at, has got to be good, okay. Movement to receive the ball, so and creating space, okay, and then our first touch all comes into it. So if we're trying to play first time, our movement towards the ball has got, uh, got to enable that, Okay, if we're looking to open out and play, our first touch has got to be good. Okay, so it's got to be, are we gonna, if it's in a tight area, okay, taking it, so we're protecting the ball from the opposition. If it's into space, taking it away from the body to then play through. And again, our execution of our passes, playing a nice firm pass into the players. And also when we're setting it, okay, taking the weight off the pass for one of the players to move on to. In terms of our psychological corner this week, starting off with awareness, okay, so it's, with our awareness, it's always looking um, at the space around us, okay, so let's say we're working with the floaters, and one of the floaters makes a run behind and comes in front, okay, we can then pull out into space to give them that space to then take the touch away into space, okay, and then the next pass which comes in, we can then think of, all right, where's the next space to get the ball, okay, so sometimes we're, that spatial awareness isn't just to, for yourself to receive the ball, okay, it's important to say to the players, it's for one of your teammates to receive it. Okay, so if it comes into a game and you're trying to move the ball from the centre back through midfield, if one of the centre midfielders moves out, okay, it's not just for them to receive the ball, so somebody else can come in and occupy that space and then move the ball on again. Uh, decision making, okay, so again with our setting um, and where we're going to play the play the passes, we've got to start this, having a look of where we're going to play passes before it's coming to us. So being aware of what's around us, what options we've got. So if we're receiving the ball and we've got a player making a run from the left channel coming in. Okay, can we look to set and then what's my decision going to be after that? Where's my movement going to be? Am I going to go around the player? Okay, to give them that space to move into or kind of move towards them so they can set it back and then where's my next pass? Okay, so it's important to tell the player to... Um, Think about the decisions they're going to make, and when you do it, do it quickly as well. Don't hesitate, okay? If you're going to play a pass, you've got to do it quick, because once you hesitate, there's more chance of the opposition winning the ball. Having that confidence on the ball then, okay? So confidence to open out and play, confidence to play first time, confidence to play those passes through the lines, okay? Where there might only be small gaps, but if we do it quickly, there's more chance of it coming off. And then agency, okay, so agency to get on the ball, agency to go and receive it, agency to get the ball, get it away, get into another space, okay, and retain possession and look to go forward. And then moving into our physical corner, okay, so looking at speed and tempo all in one really, okay, so our speed of play, okay, but speed of movement towards the ball, okay, which then gives our tempo to be high. Our tempo intensity is high, okay, because again, going back to moving that ball quickly, the quicker we move it and the higher the intensity is and the tempo is, it's harder for the opposition to adapt, okay, so if balls are coming in and it's going into one of the unopposed areas like it was in part two, okay, and then it's getting moved across the pitch and then it's going forward at a, at a high speed, okay, and a good tempo, there's, it's harder for the opposition to adapt. So then finally, we're looking at our body position, okay, so our body shape and receiving the ball. So receiving it with someone uh, behind us, we've got to be able to protect it. So it might be a setback to another player, okay, to then move out. So our body shape can be, okay, I'm going to protect the ball if the defender's going to come around the outside of me, okay, so I know exactly where I'm going to set it. So if a player plays the ball in, uh, Quite, quite square on and you're going to set them on the left side you're going to move out to the opposite way okay to try and convince the defender to come with you okay so when you set it if you're holding the defender off it's harder for them to come round all right so that player's then got to anticipate and have that agency to know where the ball's going to go and then finally moving on to our social corner starting off with communication so telling players they've got time telling players they've got man on okay and um, tell them where to receive okay where the space is so it might be um, a player comes into space and then spin out okay because then somebody else is going to be behind them okay so a little bit of communication from the touchline from coaches and then from players on the pitch as well working as a unit so again feeding into that communication so working with the floaters Working with your midfielders, working as with, with your wingers, with your fullbacks, okay? All making sure that they're doing the right things, okay? So giving themselves positive reinforcements, okay? Again, as a coach and as a player, giving themselves encouragement, praise, support, and then backing each other, okay? When they lose the ball to go win it back, and when they've got it, to retain possession for as long as they can. Now moving into the final part of this week's session, we're now focusing on a small side of the game, which is based on retaining possession, to then play forward and try and score. All right, so in terms of the setup for this part of the session, you can adapt it again uh, based on how many players you're working with, if you do have more players, and again, the age group that you're working with. We're going to have 40 yards of depth in total. It's going to be two 15-yard zones here, okay? And then we're going to have a 10-yard zone in the middle for middle players. But we've also got this zone able for players who are attacking to move into as well. 
And in terms of our width, we're going to go 25 yards to start with. Again, that might be a bit too small if you're working with older players because you're encouraging movements into space. But if it's not, if it's where, if it's perfect, you don't need to change it. You might need to make it a little bit bigger. And again, if you're working with younger players, you might need to make it a little bit smaller. So the ball will start with the coach. You've got 3v3 to start with, okay, in each zone. And they're trying to use the floaters. The floaters can come into the zone, okay, when the first period of, the progression, uh, of possession is happening. So the coach might play into the blues. They're trying to maneuver the, maneuver the ball into the central area, okay? So they're going to get through here to then go and attack in here. So uh, they're allowed, all, all of this team could go and attack there, but then what they've got to realise is they've got no players left in here. Okay, so they're going to try and maneuver the ball. Okay, you might have a yellow player in the middle moving in, okay? And then you might have, one of them might come in short, okay? So then if the player comes in short here, it gets played in, and then the blue player's on the run, okay? He's following in. He might get followed in here, so then the yellow will come out. Okay, and then it becomes a 4v4 in here. So once they've uh, beat that first trap, shall we say, okay, that first pressing trap, okay, they played through the lines, they've got through into space, then we're looking to attack in here quickly. They might play the ball in, okay. Movement, okay, into these areas, and then we're looking to finish into the small side of goals. If you don't have the small side of goals, again, just use uh, poles or cones. But then what will happen then is we then change the direction of play. So then the ball will start in this zone here, so then it will come a 4v4, okay? So then it'll just be 2v2 in here. So then it might be a little bit tighter for the players to get the ball out. And also, obviously with the yellow coming in, they still get that overload, but more chance of the greens winning it back. So again, they're looking to play in, looking to maneuver that ball, play through, okay? Or again, driving themselves if they can. Okay, but looking for them to try and receive it. And then it might have one player come in to make it a 3v3, or you might get two runs. You might get a full back in the midfielder running, okay? And then you might receive the ball with the yellows here. You need some movement off these players. Gets played in. Okay, you're driving in. Create some space. Play in. And then we're trying to penetrate quickly and score. And then again, if this player's in the middle zone here and they've already scored, they can move back into here. But as soon as they're in this box, they have to stay in there. Unless they lose possession, obviously, uh, we transition. So then, obviously, what we're looking for then is, might be a 3v3 in here again. If the blues get the ball, Okay, they have the yellow dropping in to support. And if they play in, set back and then look to play through and the greens win it, the greens instantly just look to attack this side. Okay, so trying to put it through as quick as possible. Using the yellow, which instantly it transitions over and comes with the team in possession. Then they'll look to score, okay, and instantly play into the other side. And then they're looking then to retain possession in there and then attack this way. Okay, so what we're looking for is moving that ball quickly, okay, penetrating through, okay, and then once we're in this area here, trying to score. Okay, as quick as we can. So then it could be a final ball through into the front three or just attacking the goal. Obviously, if you want to introduce a keeper or uh, bigger goals, you can do. Obviously, each side, you can get it as soon as they receive the ball in here to try and score in the final third. So just adapt it how you see fit. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thanks for watching this week's video. For more content, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. The links will be in the description below. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.